I seek refuge in Allah from Satan, the curse, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. I hope that by the grace of Allah Almighty, uh, all acts of worship and service is conducted by you will be accepted. And may our Savior, Imam Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance and peace be upon him. Bless us all. And Lady Fatima Masuma, peace be upon her. Intercede for our needs and this world and the hereafter. There is an invisible matter in Allah's creation that is just like gravity. It is at work but cannot be seen. Nonetheless, it is real. Allah Almighty has a lot of invisible things at work. that we can only know and understand them by their effects. One of such invisible thing is that when whatever a person, whether good or bad, does to others in this world, will return to himself. Therefore, if he does good things, good things will happen to him. And if he does bad things to others, bad things will happen to him. Sometimes, since a time lapse happens in between, one does not understand why something good happens to him. Thus, once you help someone solve his problem, and then later on you have a major problem solved in return. Even you don't understand why that happened. You think that it might be have been due to your own wits or shrewdness. On the other hand, sometimes some calamities might happen while you don't think that you would have deserved it. But once you have broken someone's heart or bothered someone and bad things have returned to you, there are many invisible matters in Allah's creation. There are some numerous in indications in the verses of Holy Quran and also there are many narrations in this regard. One of such indication is the story of two brothers. One of these brothers was married and the other was not. These two brothers shared the farm, and thus when they have harvested the wheat, they had to have equal shares of the crops. So they harvested the crops and cut them in half and put them in the same place. We suppose that all the crops had been 2,000 kilograms. They cut them into 1,000 kilograms parts and went to their house to have rest and decided to take his own share tomorrow. <coughs> the brother who was married suddenly woke up in the middle of the night and thought to himself, is it true that both of us have an equal share of these crops? This is my brother who might want to get married soon, so he is in need of money more than I do. But I am married, and my life is stable. So he got out of the bed and tiptoed the place and took, for instance, 100 kilogram of his own crops and added to the, that of his brothers. 
Then, rather happily, he came back to his own bed, and his share is now 900 kilograms. On the contrary, he was very happy, and he thought, I will never tell my brother about this, because if he finds out, he might be embarrassed or even give it back. So he went back to the bed after a short while. The other brother, the unmarried one, he thought, I'm single, and I do not need much money, for I'm still unmarried. But my brother is married and has children too. He needs much more money than I do. I better go and take some of my own crops and add them to my brother's share. It is really unusual 100 kilograms to be added to their shares. So he took, for instance, 100 kilograms of his own crops and added to that of his brother's. Then he told himself, I will not tell my brother about this. It should be noted that it is not what all brothers do. This is what two pure souls do. It's done by someone who always wants good things for others, someone who loves to take away from his own properties and gives away to the others. So this brother also added some of his own crops to his brother's share and then came back to bed happily. He told himself, I did a good thing because he was my brother, so he went to bed. So each one took 100 kilograms his own and added to his brother's share. So their share must still have been 1,000 kilogram. However, they went to their crops the next day to weigh them, and they were surprised to find that both shares were 1,100 kilograms. Each of these two brothers recounted his own story of last night, and they did not understand what had happened and where that extra weight had come from. Who had added this 100 kilogram to their shares? This, however, had been an invisible reward from Allah Almighty. This is Allah Almighty who returns the results of good deeds. This is He who returns the result of bad ones. There is an old Farsi saying which is perfectly true and translated literally as whatever you give out to others with one hand, you shall receive the same later in the other. If you give someone a flower one day, you must expect to be given a flower later. If you punch someone else, you must expect to someone to punch you as well. It is possible that it takes even 10, 20 or 50 years. Such events are not only limited. It is also true for brothers, sisters, two classmates, neighbors, for two strangers who get familiar with each other during their travel. And they have spent some time with one another. And maybe they would never meet one another during their lifetime again. No good deed would go unnoticed in this world. No good deed would go unnoticed in this world. Therefore, we should make this decision that Whatever we see suitable for ourselves, see suitable for the others as well, and act upon this during his lifetime. These two brothers really found felicity in this world with no doubt. Felicity doesn't mean that such people are never poor. This world is inflected with all kinds of problems. The best people created by Allah Almighty were the Holy Prophet and his descendants who had numerous problems. However, the felicity the Lady Fatima had in her life, despite all her hardships, no other woman on earth had or will ever have. Also, the felicity that Imam Ali, peace be upon him, had is in his life, despite all hardships he experienced in his life, is incomparable to that of anyone. Felicity and welfare is not being wealthy, money, and a great position, or even healthy. 
Their not felicity sometimes comes with money, sometimes it is accompanied by wealth, and sometimes without it. Most of you are young people and even teenagers. Make this decision and guarantee your own felicity. Make the decision to see suitable for others what you see suitable for yourself. Whether they understand or not. Whether they appreciate you or not. Even if they do not appreciate you, the result once returns to you because he who is in charge of this world is Allah Almighty. This is one of visible realities. Do not see suitable for others what you do not see suitable for yourselves. Whether they are from your family or strangers, you owe them something or they owe you in some way. This is the key to welfare and felicity. May Allah Almighty bless Muhammad and his pure descendants.